Guys, oh my god, what the hell just happened? Yesterday, I was happily preparing my Arlecchino build guide video when out of nowhere I get word that their kit got changed. And not changed in the sense that their multipliers went up a little or something like that, she got changed changed. They basically restructured how her kit functions as a whole and so the guy that was making became useless, just like that. The bad news here is that her extremely messy kit got even messier, but the good news is that I'm here today to explain it all to you again. So. First of all, let me make one thing very clear, just so it doesn't get lost in translation. To me, this is a significant buff in terms of power level for Arlecchino, and it also makes a lot of sense in terms of kit design. And not only that, if you were one of those people that was kinda skeptical about playing her with Bennett, these new changes push her towards a playstyle that doesn't integrate him that well. So let's check it out, I'll try to make it sound as simple as possible, so just bear with me. Essentially, your Bond of Life mechanics got completely modified. As a reminder, Bond of Life is what allows her to get major buffs on her normal attacks. The way it worked before, you were mainly able to get Bond of Life through the elemental skill and also a little bit through the elemental burst. In single target situations, if you fully stack the elemental skill effects and also use the elemental burst, you will be able to get 85% Bond of Life. Additionally, every normal attack hit will decrease increase this Bond of Life by 5.5%. The positive effects of the Bond of Life on Arlecchino would remain active until the Bond of Life fell below 30%. Meanwhile, here is what happened today. Her elemental burst lost the small Bond of Life related effect it had, but in return it gained the massively important effect that allows it to reset the elemental skill cooldown on cast. This is great, because her elemental skill is her main way to generate Bond of Life. Here I'm assuming that two elemental skills can stack Bond of Life on top of each other. So for example, if one generates 70% Bond of Life and the other generates 40%, you get 110 in total. The way the skill generates Bond of Life got also changed a bit, because it now generates 40% at one stack and 70% at two stacks. This is different from before, when the elemental skill could generate three stacks in 6 seconds to get 70% bond of life. Now it can get 70% in 2 stacks, but in 5 seconds cumulatively. Basically, it now takes her a little shorter to maximize bond of life. On top of this, the base multipliers during her special stance got increased by a ridiculous amount, in the sense that they're a lot fucking higher now. As compensation for this significant buff, her elemental skill cooldown got increased from 15 seconds to 30 seconds. What? <laughs> Fear not, because they also added an extra cooldown reduction effect with the normal attacks. Each normal attack will decrease the elemental skill cooldown by 0.8 seconds. This puts even more importance on her executing a good rotation every time. At a glance, this might look like a nerf, but I assure you, it's more of a complication, really. Overall, by the looks of it, the mechanics tied to her bond of life got significantly better, but in return, its decrease rate got increased to 6.5% for each normal attack. So, is it bad? Or is it good? Let's visualize it in terms of rotations. The objective here is to use an elemental skill two times a rotation to maximize the bond of life you get, and from what I've seen, this can go two ways essentially. I don't want to complicate things too much, so you have to give me a bit of blind faith here. There is a version for short rotations and a version for long rotations. For the short rotation, you use an elemental skill right before the elemental burst, then a charge attack, then another elemental skill, and then after six seconds of normal attacks, another charge attack to get the bond of life from the second elemental skill. By doing this, you will be able to generate 110 cumulative bond of life in a rotation, which is higher compared to what you got before, and not only that, the average bond of life you get during the full window is also higher compared to before, despite the decrease rate increasing in this patch. This is also on top of the fact that their base multipliers got increased by a lot, so it's very good. However, this is also at the cost of a longer setup, since you have to use an extra elemental skill and an extra charge attack, but we'll get to this later. The second rotation is basically the same as the first, with the one difference that you use the first elemental skill with Arlecchino at the start of the rotation instead of just before her elemental burst. This is just for long rotations, and the reason is that because of how her elemental skill cooldowns got changed, she might not have it ready at the start of the rotations if it's too short in terms of rotation time. Overall, this allows her to get 140 bond of life with her cumulatively, which is higher compared to the first version, and of course so is the average bond of life you get during the window. Note that based on the team you're using, there might be some slight modifications to this, but this is the baseline. The changes don't end here, but what I just explained is the big part of it. There are three positives here in total. First, her average normal attack damage increased. Second, her rotations can now be extended even more than before because she gets more cumulative bond of life. Third, since she now uses two elemental skills per rotation, 
generation, she should also generate more particle. There could be a cooldown to her particle generation, but for now I'm assuming there isn't. Because the last change of this patch is that the healing got moved from the elemental skill to the elemental burst. Pretty obvious change, because now you get to use two elemental skills per rotation, one of them while you still have Bond of Life on Arlecchino, and since healing removes Bond of Life from you, it's better to have it on the burst for this version. On the flip side, it makes her more burst reliant, because if you want to survive, you can't burst every other rotation now, which if she can't generate particles with the second elemental skill like I said before, this could be a problem. But I assume it does. This could age badly, but for now, I assume it does. Now, regarding the reception to these changes, it got pretty funny, like very funny actually. There are a couple versions to this, because before the changes got updated in beta today, yesterday they were leaked by one of the famous leakers. People were very angry about that, and why it's different now, I think even the way it was before wasn't that bad, it was quite good actually. But still, today's changes are different, and people are now very confused because they don't get what is going on anymore. Admittedly, my mental state is also getting worse by the minute. I feel like I'm going insane with all of these changes, honestly, but uh, <laughs> I'm trying to stay sane just for you. This is where I feel like we theory crafters are needed the most, because while you can sort of interpret these changes by just reading them and theorizing it, Without math, it gets really, really bad. But again, in my opinion, these changes are pretty positive. So let's try to visualize them in terms of real themes now. Let me remind you all that if you enjoy my channel but you haven't subbed yet, please consider doing so because it really helps me notice your support. The main problem to solve with the new version of Arlecchino is that she's now trickier to slot into the old rotations I had with her. Because if you want to take advantage of the new positive effects she has, she now has a more extended setup. Before it was just an elemental skill at the start of the rotation, then charge attack and burst later, then normal attack spam. Previously, this allowed her to almost perfectly slot into buff windows like a Bennett's, Kazuas, Yelans, but now things are slightly different. She now has to use an extra elemental skill and charge attack, and this makes her windows longer. Additionally, the fact that now her elemental skill is harder to manage in terms of cooldown makes her rotation stricter, meaning that in order to prevent issues, you have to do things in a certain order. For example, the thing I tried to do with the Bennett, Shenling, Kazua team is to theorize her setup being used in a whole different window than her main combo. The most important thing is to ensure her normal attacks get buffed as much as possible. Now more than ever before, because the average damage of her normal attacks increased by a lot, so this is very important. So even though some of her attacks like her elemental burst, two elemental skills, one charge attack don't end up getting buffed by Bennett or Shell Ling, it's fine it seems in terms of rotation damage for the new version because of how strong her normal attacks are. This rotation could of course slightly change depending on the situation you're facing, but as a baseline it seems that it's better than the previous version. You deal higher damage per second on a longer rotation, which means much higher damage per rotation. However, the thing that truly excites me here are teams that can integrate longer rotations more seamlessly. For example, Chevru's teams. Since Arlecchino can now extend the rotations by a lot, she fits very well with a character like Chevru's that has long-lasting buffs. However, for this to work, she needs to have two more teammates that have equal characteristics. So, Characters that in the same way fit well in long rotations. And the solution I found for now is Fischl, Yai, Shebrus, Arlecchino. Fischl and Yai are two characters that can pretty much keep the elemental skill damage going for the entirety of a 25 seconds long rotation. This is a perfect scenario for Arlecchino since she can do her long windows here without hurting the synergy with any other character on the team. And this is what I believe to be her true potential moving forward, so teams with long rotations that are easy to play. Starting to look a bit like I'll hate them here, like a melee character that has no interruption resistance and can play in a quick swappy way sort of. But yeah, this is much better for the double electro Chevrus team with Beidou and Fischl because Arlecchino is now much better suited for this composition. And I think the way she is now, the more characters get released, the more she'll move away from characters like Bennett. Because while she can still fit with short duration buff, it's very clear that her potential is different now, like she prefers a different thing. I haven't calculated other teams yet because it's so early and there is more to explore, but for now I like what I see. And if you wanted Arlecchino to feel like a different character from other pyro carries, now you got it. And I'm done for today. If you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and also go check the latest video I made on the 4.5 abyss usage rates. Peace!